Oh, it really had the feeling that we'd be able to make it further. I genuinely thought this team was going to get it together and win the Super Bowl this year. I genuinely did. It was not in the uh, in the cards. Ha ha. Uh, but we move on. We move on. We march. And we see what happens in a very important offseason. Did they score off of every turnover? Yes, they did. Yes, they did. Uh, staff moves really quickly. Brian Dable has been fired as the head coach of the New York football giants. Payne being from Missouri feels. <laughs> we'll see who ends up in the championship games, who ends up winning Super Bowl 64, if I am not mistaken. And we will focus on ourselves this offseason. We still have money to play with. It'll be Bills, Chargers, Falcons, and Bears. And out of these four teams, one of them has won a Super Bowl in this franchise mode. And for those that missed it, it was the Atlanta Falcons. They've actually been to two finals, two Super Bowls in this run. Might they be going back with, again, Desmond Ritter at the helm? Could be the case. Let's find out. Who is making the Super Bowl in 2029? And the answer, Falcons and Bills. The biggest losers of the 90s go head to head <laughs> for a chance to win it all. Another Super Bowl appearance for the Falcons. It's the battle of one seeds. Falcons and Bills for the 2029 Super Bowl, Super Bowl 64. Winner gets a Nintendo. We're not too worried about the Pro Bowl. What we are worried about, of course, is awards. And might we have a Rookie of the Year? I don't think we will because there's no upgrade points. That is unfortunate. But let's take a look at the yearly awards nonetheless. The MVP, Joe Burrow. Joe Burrow wins league MVP. Remember that we could have drafted that guy. Coach of the year, Arthur Smith. How the fuck weren't we top 10? That's insanity. AFC Offensive Player of the Year, Lamar Jackson, even though Burrow was the MVP. Defensive Player of the Year, Trenton Simpson in Tennessee. Offensive Rookie of the Year, Carlos Berry of the Miami Dolphins. And Defensive Rookie of the Year, Nick Harmon of the Chargers. Brianna, good to see you. How are you? Uh, not too worried, of course, about the other awards. NFC Offensive Player of the Year, wide receiver Bradley Cheney. We had nobody in the top ten. Defensive Player of the Year, Aaron frickin' Donald. We did have Forrest Harris finish tenth. The Offensive Rookie of the Year, Clark Garfield. We didn't have anybody up there. Except, that's a lie, actually. We did have Dalton, who was fourth, which is pretty good. Defensive Rookie of the Year, Derek Newsom. As McGee finished ninth. So, that's, uh, that's a bit rough. A boot in the ass out of the playoffs. No hardware to show for it. On a team or individual basis. The winners... Of Super Bowl 64. Who's it going to be? Drum roll, please. The winners are the Atlanta Falcons. They've done it again. Oh, my God. We have to play the song again. We do. Falcons it's got to be done. Their second Super Bowl in this franchise mode. Jesus. Yeah, that's enough. Uh, Cannon, keep an eye out. Maybe, just maybe. Again, we still have this from a holdover of our Falcons franchise in the past. Uh, that is up on the second channel, by the way. TWOJE24. And if you're watching this on YouTube, you're already on the right channel. Yeah, good for you. Thank you for being here and being a friend. Golden Girls. And 
Anyway, the Atlanta Falcons win their second Super Bowl. Safety Brian Branch was MVP. So again, the recap for the prior few years. Uh, last year, it was Philadelphia winning their second Super Bowl over Baltimore. 2027 was Baltimore winning their third by beating Dallas. And then in 2026, it was Atlanta winning their first with Desmond Ritter. So there you go. 2025, Carolina winning their first uh, title in franchise history. And 2024 was the Bengals winning their first over Atlanta. So, And of course, the very first season, it was uh, San Francisco led by Sam Darnold winning the Super Bowl, their sixth in franchise history. So, 2029 has come to a close. We have an 87 overall team with $46 million in cap space, which is tremendous. And we're going to try to weaponize it if we can. But first, retirements. Uh, some rough losses for Nolans. Terry McLaurin's gone. Finally, I'm free. Salvation. Aaron Donald has retired. If I had a confetti cannon, I'd be popping the fucking thing. Oh, the nightmare is over. Holy shit. The curse that has been bestowed upon our franchise has finally been lifted. We have carried Madame Zeroni up the mountain and everything's going to be okay because Aaron Donald has retired. Holy shit. Oh, that's just so oh, what a feeling. What a feeling. Thank God for that. Whew, George, oh, it's a bad year for San Fran as well. They lose George Kittle and Debo Samuel. The division's getting weaker. Rough offseason there for the Colts. Rough offseason for the Chargers, losing Joey Bosa. We're going to lose a bunch of our veteran mentors, which is perfectly fine. Nobody to worry about. Nick Chubb is gone. Miles Jack, which, LOL, obviously we started this before he retired during uh, preseason. I was going to say training camp, which might technically be correct. Mike Williams is gone. That's our Super Bowl, Aaron Donald retiring. I didn't throw my controller before Aaron Donald retired. Baker Mayfield, Geno Smith, J.C. Jackson, Jack Jones. He was found with another gun in Logan Airport, <laughs> but they're calling it retirement. Alvin Kamara, this is a big year for retirements, especially Drew Locke, the greatest quarterback we've mentioned. Drew Locke. Aaron Donald is gone. Thank God. Thank God. Uh, this is our practice squads. We'll just auto-upgrade them. Whew, uh, Fire Cannon, we've done a Veterans Challenge before. There's always a chance we could do it again. I'm so disappointed in that playoff loss, but at least Aaron Donald's gone. Thank God. No new uh, head coach movement. So nothing to worry about there. So we get to the resign phase. We're not going to have too much, if anything, to do aside from like a fifth year option. There really, yeah, there really isn't anything to look at there. See what we got. Mentioned the Falcons. Uh, my coworker brought his pet falcon today. He has to have a permit. Giving out feathers is a 5K fine. Where the hell do you work that your coworker would own a falcon? Inquiring minds want to know. Let's see what we have for contracts here. What do we got? We will obviously. Be uh, picking up the fifth year option for Zach Henry. And then he's going to be very, very expensive uh, further beyond that. Uh, Josh Leach. I don't think I can pick up the fifth year option on Josh Leach. Uh, so we'll have him as a backup quarterback for one more season on his rookie deal. And then he's gone. And then from there, it looks to be nothing but the veterans... That we're going to be letting go of. I work at a crisis mental health facility. Wouldn't that make it worse? Like, I can only speak for me. If I'm in a mental health facility and a man shows up with a falcon. I, you know, like it seems counterintuitive. That's just me. I don't know. That's just that's just me. 
Christ, like, you might as well work at a preschool, like, you're just, you're just putting people in danger of just going into panic mode. Jesus. Anyway. Anyway. We go to free agency. Let's see what we can do. Let's see what we can do. Listen, I just worked there. Fair. <laughs> Who's available in terms of free agents as we're going to be looking to load up to win a damn Super Bowl next year? At quarterback, Kyler Murray, who has no interest in coming back to Arizona. Dak Prescott's there as a veteran QB that we do not currently need. Trey Lance is also out there. And I would rather saw my own balls off than give you a penny. So yeah, nobody to sign there except for Zach Wilson. Nobody to worry about. Running backs, Antoine Simmons. We do not need him. Uh, there was also Gilbert Shepard. Jake's upstairs streaming right now, so I know he's laughing at me. Fair enough. Fair enough. I mean, hey, on one hand, interesting job that someone could bring a Falcon to work. On the other, kind of weird, but I know you know that. <laughs> what do we got at wide out? Uh, DJ Moore. I mean, we're going to be looking for a different uh, a different option. If we're if we're bringing in a wide receiver, it's it's going to be from the draft, as we know. So. Tight end wise, Eric Hunter. Again, we don't need him. Left tackle, Colton Miller. Could overpay Colton Miller on a one year deal just to improve the O line. Elton Jenkins would have been nice. At center, Eric McCoy. Right guard, nobody interesting to us. Matthew Bolden, former player of ours. And at right tackle, Daniel Howard. So we could technically go for a slight O-line upgrade in Colton Miller, which wouldn't be bad. Uh, defensive line, Quiddy Pay has no interest in coming here. Defensive tackle, Ed Oliver, has no interest in, in coming here. Unfortunately, he's got other legitimate offers. There is Hugh McBride, but it's not a big upgrade. Cassidy Baker, former player of ours. He was the guy that won Rookie of the Year and then declined, so we traded him. Linebacker, Taylor James. Oh, man, come on. I need a good linebacker here. Good linebackers coming to premium. There's nobody there. There is Luke Broughton, who's not terrible, but he's not significantly better than who we have. Uh, at corner, holy hell, we don't need him at all. But Bart Flowers. <sighs> Sign him and trade away some other options. Maybe we put our name into the hat for Bart Flowers. Okay. Well, in my opinion, there are two players to go after. How much would the big money deal for Bart Flowers cost us? It'd bring us down to $33.6 million in cap. It would put us in the mix. We'll go for it. And we're also going to send a deal to Colton Miller, who currently has no offers... We'll send him a one-year deal that brings our cap down to $20 million, but that's okay. Those are the two targets. Let's see what happens. Evaluation offer number one. They're both gone, but are they with us? Yes. Two big free agent signings. Bart Flowers for five years. Colton Miller as a one-year veteran rental. We're going for it. No more 100 plus million in cap space. We're going for it. As we have to. Again, a lot of the other guys were not interested. We will be making a trade. Fart blowers, baby. Would you prefer fart blowers? My Patriots franchise wanted me to cut Matthew Slater. Yeah, if you told me that you did, I would have banned you. That's all we need in free agency, really. Again, we'll look at making a trade at the draft, which... Should work out pretty well. But now it's just a matter of who signed to where. But yeah, this draft will end up being a little bit interesting. I definitely think there'll be some potential trade options for us here, though. I'm not too worried about AI staff moves at this point. They're always a little bit weird. 
you know, a high, guy in high school that was named BJ Blowers. Well, his parents are hilarious. So that's that's good, at least. So we'll get a free agency recap. We will obviously have to do some scouting. And then we will take it from there in terms of what this draft is going to be for us. Let's get that free agency recap. 88 overall team right now as well. So the big name, Zay Flowers, goes to Houston. We got Bart Flowers. Joey Porter Jr. goes to the Raiders. Okay. Jenkins to the Patriots. Of course, we picked up Colton Miller. And then the quality starts to dip a little bit from there. But yeah, those were two huge signings for us. And that corner trade will allow us to get younger. But right now, the private workouts, before we get into the... The meat and potatoes, the nitty gritty of the scouting, which will always take about you know, 15, 20 minutes, even though I'm going to try to do it quickly. We know about Marco Macklin, and if we can trade into a top five pick, if we can trade to the number one overall pick, I'm going to do it. Again, we have yet to see a receiver. His high end speed isn't outstanding, but it's not slow either at a 4 4 1. He's got pretty damn good agility and acceleration. And his skills are what stand out. This guy is insane. And if I can trade up to get him, I got to take him. Have to. I mean, that not as if our receiver core isn't good now, but my God, that would just take it to a different level. So aside from that, we do not need a quarterback. It's really not even a consideration uh, whoever we were to take would it just end up being a backup anyway. It would be a waste of their potential. Um, we really don't need a running back either. Wide receiver wise, you can see just how dire the situation is for any other receiver in terms of their top grades in this draft. For whatever reason, the, the quality of wideouts has been abysmal, which is why. The dude at the top is so interesting because the wideouts have been abysmal, man. So if we look elsewhere at what we might need, should I ever go to an away game at TD Garden as a Lynx fan? Sure. I really feel like there's a heated rivalry between the two teams. I don't see why you'd have problems. A lot of drunk people sit in the 300s, though. Be prepared for that, but that's everywhere. If we can find a linebacker steal like Rick Milstead, in a later round, we will be laughing to the bank. We just need to find the best linebackers to look at to try and confirm their grades. And there are some interesting ones. Let's look at Rick Milstead, Brian Long, and on the right... Let's find out if Glenn Parks is the real deal. We looked at him a bit before. Junior Mann's in that conversation as well. Those will be the focus options there, but we do have to go through all the fun of trying to find good players. So buckle up for that. All right, so for the sake of getting to the draft faster, I've got, obviously, chat, you know, like we've gone through, we've pinned anybody that has good grades, Normally, I immediately then look to see who has a good combine. I'm actually going to wait to do that until we get to the draft, just because what we need uh, might change, and how we approach this draft might change heavily based on whether or not we trade up. So the good news for everyone here that stuck around and didn't immediately bail, because ah, 10 minutes of boring, uh, is that we're getting to the draft right about now. So congratulations. There's your reward for sticking around. Yeah, thank you. I'm <laughs> runs hit ad hits run ad. I'm tired. Remember what happened last time I went through a draft tired. This will be a fun one. Anyway, uh, let's do this. The 20 30 NFL draft. The Philadelphia Eagles have the number one pick. Now I do want to go through the team to see if any uh, dev patterns have changed because that could also alter what we are planning on doing during this draft, right? So let's take a look. Before we even talk to Philadelphia, 
Let's take a look at our team and get a bit of an update going here. So we have the first uh, round pick. I mean, we really don't have an extra pick until the fourth round. Same as last year. Quarterback Dennis Payne, still an X factor. This is the last year we could trade Leach or we can have him as a backup. We have a choice there. Obviously, if Payne were to go down, Leach isn't a bad backup to have. He would be leaving at the end of next season anyway. Running back wise, Walton's still an X factor. We still have Tyler Nash as a backup, which is beautiful. Um, we could look at what he's worth at least. Wideouts, of course, we have Henry, Brandon Bush, Bryce Wells is still there. Dalton did not improve. Um, if we were to acquire this wide receiver, Bryce Wells would be moved back to tight end. And then the weakest, ooh, Lonnie Reed dropped from X Factor to Superstar. Okay. Lonnie Reed dropped. You're right, Walton did go X Factor again. I, I don't know how I didn't even notice that. I said it and I didn't notice it. It gave him truss. <laughs> oh my god. Last time it gave him unstoppable force or whatever. This time it gives him truss, which means when he's in the zone, he literally cannot fumble the football. As if he wasn't overpowered enough. Amazing. So yeah, tight end situation. Wells, Reed, Casey, someone's probably going to get traded. We'll see. Like I said, it's a shame that Dalton didn't improve yet. On the O-line, we signed Colton Miller, which means Greg Ringer could go. Obviously, Jay Williams is still here. Jeremiah Proctor. Uh, we do have Farley, who's a depth option that could be traded. And then, honestly, Gladstone's not really improving all that quickly. We could move him out now and move Ringer to the interior. So that's also an option. Chest, still an X-Factor. McGee did drop to normal. Literally the same freaking situation as Daryl Hunt. Like, they're solid, but they're not going to be elite. kind of sucks. Uh, Forrest Harris, still an X-Factor. Spitzer, still at normal. Um, honestly, at that point, we might as well look at trading Spitzer and just playing Fuller in that spot, who's younger and only two points worse. Bunny, take it easy, by the way. Malone's still at star. Gary behind him. That's a good one, too. And then Groves. I mean, we got to keep him until we get a replacement. Alexander's the big one. After signing Flowers, we can move on from Alexander, who's entering the final year of his deal, and run Callahan, Flowers, Okuda, and Kohu, who has gotten worse. I doubt he has trade value, having dropped off that badly, but I could explore it. But yeah, Alexander's the big piece I'm intrigued to trading. And then honestly, Monty Henson. He's a really good depth piece, but if I can get something good for him, I should deal him. Yeah, Alexander dropped uh, again. You're right, from superstar to star. So he is falling off very quickly. At least in terms of the abilities. His overall still very good. So, shits and gigs. If we were to trade Josh Leach, what could we get for him? Linebacker Juan Woodward in a fourth? That's not bad. Get a good linebacker into the mix. Marquise Brown, we don't need. Uh, Mozzie, ooh, Mozzie Smith wouldn't be the worst. He's fucking expensive. He'd be our best DT. Henry Bell, I mean, we're already moving corners. Devin Fowler, another young linebacker to potentially build around. Marcel Durham. How good was uh, Fowler? Yeah, Fowler, 25 and an 81. I mean, it feels like the right move here is Devin Fowler. Trade Josh Leach to the Raiders, solve one of our linebacker problems. And, I mean, a seventh round pick at the same time, but take a hit at backup, take a hit at second string quarterback to improve at starting linebacker. I feel like that's a no brainer, regardless of the cap implications. We're going to move on from Josh Leach. He is the newest member of the Vegas Raiders. I accidentally hit back there, but yeah, that was uh, that was a no-brainer, I would say. And again, hopefully it doesn't affect us too much on a cap penalty. Uh, if we were to trade Tyler Nash. Alex Donahue is not that much better at DT. Hardesty. Uh, doesn't look like we'd get 
any kind of major prospect to build around. There might have been a deal for a running back. Zach Bundy, born on a Monday. Yeah, we'll be keeping Tyler Nash. I mean, he's really good for us, too. If we were to deal... Now, honestly, here's the other debate. If we were to pair, like, Farley, Gladstone, and Kerry Spitzer, is there a deal? And there is. I mean, presumably, we could get more for them together than we could get for them alone. You would at least presume. Defensive tackle Michael Lucas. He's fucking expensive, but he is an upgrade on what we have. He is an upgrade on what we have. Nobody major, though. I do want to see if I'm able to trade these guys on their own. We would be able to, but yeah, as expected, the return is worse. So it is better to still pair people together. Good to know. So yeah, if we were to trade... Farley, Gladstone, and Spitzer together. The best deal for us is Michael Lucas. I'm just worried about how friggin' expensive he is. How long is that contract? Because he's definitely overpaid right now, but he is an improvement on who we have. One year left, he'd be willing to stay as well. Backup center, a replaceable right guard, and a mid linebacker for a new starting defensive tackle. Now's the time to make moves. We're going to do this. So Farley, Gladstone, Spitzer on their way to the Chargers for defensive tackle Michael Lucas. And the main reason for these trades right now is to know that we're good to go before we potentially try to trade up with the Eagles. I am losing Caprum off of cap penalties for this, though. Um, so we might be looking at our first contract restructuring, especially if we pull off another trade or two. Which, I mean, a defensive tackle, you're talking about moving on from Daryl Hunt, who never developed. It can move on from John Groves now. And then Cater Kohu. Again, it might be too much in the frickin' penalty department. Allen, Deontay Collins, Daniel McCullough. We're at the point where we're certainly not going to get much back for any of those guys. I do think Alexander... Needs to be the basis for the next trade, just in case the cap penalty is immense. Alexander, on his own, would fetch us a Rashawn Gary, which would be insane, even though he's a veteran. Jason Hood, Danny Claiborne, a third and a sixth. Greg Newsom, which again, doesn't really fit the team, nor does Winfield. I mean, in fairness, nobody here really fits the team. I guess you could say like someone like Jerry Judy or Drake London. Tough call here. Tough call. Very good DT from the Patriots. Obviously, we just acquired one. Could be quite expensive. An X-Factor linebacker, Manny Saucedo. Could certainly argue that that's what we need. X-Factor corner. Jesus Christ. So yeah, Alexander could uh, fetch us a good amount. Let's go talk to our buddies in Philadelphia here. What would it take to get the first overall pick? They don't have the interest. They don't. How close does Alexander get us? It would put them over the salary cap to land Alexander. That's not ideal. Uh, if I were to take back random backup quarterback, it still wouldn't have enough. Oh, God. I don't know if we're going to be able to work out a trade with the Eagles because of the cap it. In theory, they don't need a wide receiver, but that hasn't uh, 
Hasn't stopped people before. We need at least like a $1.4 million cap hit. What about Nick Herbig? Just a gauge interest. They'd still, son of a bitch, I hate when it does that. All right, so we need about a $2 million cap hit. I'm at least willing to explore a manual trade. What about Tyree Holloway? Not even close. <sighs> that is, uh, that's a problem. That's a big, big problem. I can still try, but it is very unlikely. I would say that we are able to pull this off given the lack of cap space. I had my first, that's a half bar. If I add my first rounder next year, how close do we get? We're looking at about four first rounders. <laughs> it's not going to happen. It's too damn expensive. It is too damn expensive. So if we were to use Alexander, let's say Henson at a 79. And who else would I want to use here? I got a couple of options. We've already made an interesting trade for someone like Devin Fowler. I go back to DT, add Daryl Hunt to the mix. If I were to pair these three together, Rashawn Gary is there. I can't believe Trey Lance got traded. Really? You can't believe the guy who was third string on the Niners depth chart got traded? Again, Gary improves the team short term, but he's older. Sanders, we know, won't resign here. At least he wouldn't before. Winfield's too old. Chris Olave, Javon Holland. I mean, Drake London would be a good fit if we knew we couldn't get that number one pick. Keegan Howard drastically improves the offensive line. Marquis Little's a good young corner. Jalen Phillips won X Factor since he went to the Rams, but he's 31. Andrew Harvin. How good was that other guy? 27. I mean, that guy's a stud lineman for years to come. Gillisley at corner. I presume we get into a little bit of trouble by also adding Henson and Hunt, probably for cap purposes. I mean, again, you want to talk about... You want to talk about picking up an offensive lineman to shore things up. We move on from two depth pieces and an aging corner. That's not bad. It's really not bad. If I take those two out, and trade Alexander on his own. Just to double check what these offers were. Again, I know like Jerry Judy's out there. There was Norwood at corner, but again, we're already stacked at corner. Frank Rag now is a big time veteran. That was the interesting one with the Pats is Quentin Logan. I mean, that would certainly uh I mean, money-wise, I'm worried that that'll just screw us over. So, there's the defensive tackle, which would give us two really solid DTs to properly run the 4-3. It would make our defensive line insane. There's this lineman from the Ravens that would, of course, further improve our O-line. And then there's this guy who's only an 81, but he is an X-Factor. And he would certainly improve the linebacker core. We already improved on the right. 
that would be the improvement on the middle, or on the left, I should say, because the middle's already good. Again, there's an X-Factor corner, which would also be great, but that would require me to trade another corner in which we're already good, and I don't think I can afford to keep flipping players. I gotta be honest, Manny Saucedo's really standing out. Given the price. I mean, Quentin Logan, though. If we go for position of need right now, I'd say it's Logan or Saucedo. What ability does Manny Saucedo have? I need to at least make sure it's a useful one. It's a pretty useful one. It's zone hawk. More interceptions could move him to middle linebacker. Although, in fairness, you know, if we play a 4 3, he'll probably be in zone a lot. Also got adrenaline rush for sacking the quarterback, which is weird, but a strip specialist, too. He is an interesting one and quite bald. He won't have any desire to stay with us once his contract is up. But I would imagine he's signed for a good amount of time. Two more years after this. On a rising contract, which is a little bit scary. Again, we picked up Michael Lucas. Could run him and McGee. Defensive tackle. We do still need a left side linebacker. Badly. We already have three good corners, even if we trade Alexander. We did get a linebacker in a trade, but it's only for the right side. We need someone for the left, too. Linebacker is probably our weakest position. And again, the O-line won't be terrible. Honestly, I think trading Alexander on his own makes the most sense. I think it does. And we are going to use him and send him to the New Orleans Saints for linebacker Manny Saucedo. A fifth and a seventh. Alexander, thank you for your service. But your services are no longer required. That does still leave us with a couple of players I wouldn't mind moving. Like I said, we're probably going to get in trouble financially for all of these moves, but it's worth the risk in a lot of ways. Can I get anything for this trio? Kevin Groves, who I think used to be a center of ours. I mean, technically an improvement. Use those two depth options to get an improvement on Kater Kohu. That's not bad. On Brackens is a young wideout. Peter Steele. Incredible. Deshaun Mooney. Honestly, the veteran corner. I don't hate. I don't hate. Someone like Brackens is a good decision, but we are already pretty loaded up at wideout unless we get an elite talent. So again, I hope to not get in too much financial trouble for this. We'll actually go for another trade with the Saints. We'll go for Deshaun Mooney to be the direct replacement for Kater Kohu, and we also net a sixth round pick. So another deal with the Saints. Leaves us one player left that I wouldn't mind getting something for, and that's Monty Henson. I don't know if there'll be anything that's worth uh, trading for, and yeah, no one really wants him. So Monty will stay as a depth option, which is fine by me. Like I said, I presume the cap penalty could be a little bit harsh, but we have improved our linebacker core greatly. Corners still very, very solid. Uh, the O-line's also gotten a little bit better here, too. So I I am fairly happy with what we have just pulled off. The question now is, can we pull off the big one? I thought you said cat penalty. Well, cats and birds, you know. How the hell did this team get the first pick? There is still nothing that we can offer them directly in terms of, hey, here's an offer that we'll take. We would have to work it. And I don't think we have the assets to do so, at least not the assets that would 
significantly hurt us and our chances to win a Super Bowl, which is the only goal. The one thing that could be done is either using Joey Casey or Lonnie Reed uh, and then moving Bryce Wells back to tight end. So let's just say we were to use Joey Casey. Obviously, the value is not amazing. We use our first round pick this year. This is going to be an expensive fucking contract, but that's also why we just pulled off a lot of picks to get a lot of late picks. We use our first rounder next year. We're not even out of the red. Is there anybody else? What if we use Tyler Nash? They don't really have much interest in. And it would put him over the cap. What if we don't use Joey Casey and instead, I hate to say it because he's been awesome for us, but he did drop from X Factor to Superstar. What if we use Lonnie Reed instead? I didn't see a significant improvement between him and Casey. Anybody else that we can use to get this deal done? Rowan, I know there's very good staff offers, but again, I prioritize the the XP increases, which has worked out pretty well for us. Are they have are they interested in Monty? Not really. Yeah, Monty didn't do anything for him. Okay. What if we do that? And our second round pick next year. How much closer are we? Still in the red. I don't think we can pull this off. What about our next three first round picks in tight end Joey Casey? We're looking at four first round picks to try and land this receiver. Which you can't even trade for first round picks. Three first, the second, and tight end Joey Casey. We we don't have the value to pull off this trade. At least like a player that they'd want. You could maybe argue that Alexander, had we held him, would have worked, but at the same time, there just there is not a player that I am willing to give up that would cripple our team at this stage. So we will not be able to trade for the number one pick. Do the Eagles take that wide receiver first overall? I shudder to think, but they just might. They take defensive end Josh Stein. Denver, my friends. Denver, Denver, Denver. J squared, all good, buddy. And again, thank you for the gifted subs. You didn't have to. I appreciate it, though. Our good pals in Denver with the second overall pick. Oh, there's an offer. <laughs> oh, there's no fucking way. Nope. Uh-uh. Don't think so. <laughs> Not a snowball's chance in hell of that happening. As much as I want that wide receiver, holy shit. Will the Broncos take him second overall? No, they do not. They take offensive tackle Leonard Meredith. Miami. And again, Marco Macklin is the man that we want. Miami, Miami. You are next in line to have a conversation with. We don't have a pick until the 28th overall selection. Miami, Miami. The third overall pick. There is an offer. Walton, two firsts, a third, and a fifth. Three firsts and three seconds. Or Walton and... Okay, God. Th our next three first and second round picks. The next three years worth the first and second round picks. That is the cost 
from Miami for us to go all in on this wide receiver. That is what they want. We knew it would be expensive. We benefited from trading down. Now we're the ones looking to pay the price to get the missing piece. <laughs> if the 49ers can do it for Trey Lance, so can you. That's fair. Rob, Kurt, Slater, try swapping Walton. Oh, fuck no. Walton's not going anywhere. This trade. Beaston, what's going on, buddy? Good to see you. How have the streams been going? <sighs> Holy shit, this offer. All right, I know what the cost is. Let me try to let me try to finagle this on my own here really quickly because this is this is fucking madness. If we use Tyler Nash, we use Joey Casey, and we use Monty Henson as the starter, the appetizer here. What do you think? I mean, obviously that's a good amount of depth. If I could use these guys instead of second round picks, though, I wouldn't hate it. I mean, obviously, it's it hurts our depth quite a bit, but I mean, then, then that's the argument. We had the second round picks of the depth. If we use our first round pick this year, how much progress do we make? <sighs> okay. So that raises the question. How much of our current depth do we want to give up in exchange for holding on to these second round picks? If we use our first rounder next year, which is fine because we presume it's going to be low. Again, Henson's our second choice safety in a general sense. Casey, a tight end would have to go anyway. And then Tyler Nash is the one where it's like, oh, that kind of sucks. But they have interest in him. That saves us a second round pick. I really like Tyler Nash as a, as a receiving back option, though. I just want to safety net that with a third. If we cut out Nash and add a second round pick down the road, Casey, honestly, if I, if I take out Henson, Casey two firsts and a second, how close are we? They fucking took it. Two firsts, a second, and tight end Joey Casey. And we have the third overall pick. They really wanted Joey Casey. The third overall pick is ours. As much as I'd love to cliffhanger the people that watch this eventually on the YouTube side of things, I will not. We gave up a tight end. We'll move our former tight end to move to wide out back to replace that guy. Two firsts and a second. For wide receiver Marco Macklin, who has the best... Core attributes I have seen on a receiver in this game so far. You know, the stamina is kind of mid, but that's the only thing that's really disappointing aside from spin move, which who gives a shit? Got tremendous hands. The physicals, again, are solid. The vert jump isn't insane. The speed isn't insane. But, I mean, he also ran a 4-4, for God's sakes. Marco Macklin. Are you the dream receiver to put this core together? Three, two, one. Thank God he's hidden dev. If he was normal dev, I was going to hard reset my PC and go to bed. Marco Macklin, step one, check mark. He is hidden dev. Thank God for that. And hopefully he is an X-Factor. 95 acceleration. We took the other wideout second overall. 
His athletic ratings are strong. And Marco Macklin joins an already elite receiving core. You could argue it's overkill. But I like overkill. Get ready to restructure some contracts, by the way. That could be a bit of a problem. That could be a little, little bit of a problem. But we'll worry about that problem later on because we're going to have Zach Henry, Brandon Bush, Marco Macklin, and Dalton Montag, Montague, whatever you prefer is our wideouts. Bryce Wells will go back to tight end with Lonnie Reed. Who has the most expensive contract? Khalid, uh, I'll be in touch, buddy. <laughs> oh, good. He only has one year left. Um, we'll find someone to renegotiate with. Because we're going to have to. 